Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Today we are going to talk about buttons, junk journaling, and the giveaway that I'm doing, um, and I hope that you all will get in on it, to receive a free craft ephemera vintage antique paper packet from me. And it also has like pieces of lace and other things that are in there as well. Um, to receive your packet, all you have to do is follow the instructions that are in the description of this video and in the comments area of this video. The, the instructions are exactly the same. They're just in two different locations of this video to make it easy for you guys to get your free random act of kindness from me, which is a thank you for supporting the channel, for watching the videos all the way through or listening to them. You don't have to watch, you can listen as well, sort of like a radio program, if you will, or a podcast. Um, but I'm just saying thank you by giving away because you know some items because I have so many and this is just what I do I go through a few times a year and I just give things away and this time I'm able to give away almost 200 packets and so far I've given away almost a dozen so thank you to all of those that participated thank you to everyone that sent me a message left a comment saying that your you know information is on the way I'm so excited I can't wait to stuff all of these envelopes and send out these packets to you guys I think it's fun and it's always I don't know it's there's something rewarding about giving of, of course there's something very rewarding about receiving as well which is something I will talk about in this video too so as you can see I just have a few of the envelopes here on the side from people that um, sent me um, their request for their packets and the cool thing is they also sent me little gifts and even like notes which I love as well so thank you guys so much for doing that I really appreciate it some of the things I received um, were and I know you were looking at this saying Doc Martens like what is that these are Doc Martens um, polka dot striped um, silk or the kind of silky satin shoelaces these are the thick ribbon style thank you thank you thank you to mr. judgy for sending those to me I greatly appreciate them and I already know which pair of patent leather shoes I'm going to put those with I also received these beautiful napkins which I will be decoupaging from a fellow person, Elizabeth, who also likes to decoupage. And I have two back here. I'll move the camera. On the back wall, there's one here and one there. They're birds. Thank you so much. I, my favorite, this cute little vixen. So, so cute. I can't wait to use these in my projects. So thank you so much for those. I also received this gorgeous bit of kit from a person from Texas. I'm just going to say Ms. Kotler. Thank you so much. I love this little notebook. Um, she actually created this, so think of it as like a miniature empty junk, junk journal, which I definitely, I might actually use this to put Believe it or not, I have a lot of movie tickets from, because we, ever since we were children of, I'm going to say I was maybe 12 when I went to my first real movie that wasn't a drive-in with my parents, and my mother took me to see The Warriors. <laughs> I, I don't know how old I was exactly, but I feel like I was like 11 or 12, something like that. And so I'm going to use this maybe to put all of my old movie tickets in. Um, but this is really cool. It even has um, some side pockets here. So these are little pockets that were put in on the back and the front. And I love the way that you doubled up on the cover on the back and the front by attaching this like piece to the top. So it all you have like this ridge here. 
I'm actually going to steal that little ditty there and try that on a book that I will be creating this spring. I have two books that I've already created and I need to do videos on and they're so extensive but you guys know I also am going to be doing a video about a I'm going to call it a junk journal it's like a junk journal that is from the 1820s to about 1900 um, these it's huge it's gigantic Gigantic. Think of the biggest Bible. It's like that big and just about that thick, you guys. It has so many pages in it. And every page is stuffed with beautiful museum quality ephemera. It's This is a museum type piece when you look at it. It's just amazing and I'm blessed to have it. And it will definitely take a few videos for me to show you everything that's inside of it because it is so full and everyone will be eye drooling over it. I am pretty sure because I eye drooled and I'll tell you how I got it and all that in one of those future videos. Something else that was sent to me by a good friend from Louisiana, Jill, who's also a supporter and subscriber of this channel. So please remember to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow as well as leaving a comment and giving the video a thumbs up. Those three things are like so good for the channel and important to the channel and hopefully we deserve it. But anyway, Jill sent me almost all of the buttons that you see here. There's like a couple that I actually added in just because they were sent to me by someone else and I wanted to talk about them briefly. So let me, I'm protecting addresses and names, so let's move these envelopes. And like I said, I have about a dozen, so, you know, I just want to just add a little more vavoom to this picture here. But let's see where we can start. Oh, let me start with this. So one of the things that I've been doing is creating these button description cards or tags. So what I've been doing is just decorating a tag, you know, putting some stuff on it, and then of course including these beautiful buttons. And I am making them so that, like if you pick one up, for example, this one is about the tag one nut vegetable ivory button. And so you'll see some examples of said button on there. And inside, you know, I could put some on the back, whatever, I could fill this whole thing up, but, mo as important is inside, I will be writing um, something inside each of the tags about the history of the button as well, so that this will be a video that I will do in the future where I will show you guys all the tags that I've made. So far I have maybe 10 to 12 of them that are made and complete. Um, and others I'm still working on. Here's another one about celluloid buttons. Um, the cameo in the center is not a button and it is not made of celluloid. It's just an embellishment to make this tag look a little more interesting. And as you can see, I put one on the back as well. So that's something that is coming up and it's something I'm just working on in between other projects that I'm working on. So hopefully, you know, you guys want to see that. If there's any type of button that you would like to see featured, please leave me a note in the comments so that I can see, you know, if I have the materials to put that particular card together. Honestly, you guys, I have so many different types of buttons. I'm pretty sure that I have something. You know, the only thing I don't have is a Satsuma button. I think I've had a Satsuma button in the far, far past when I was probably like 18 or 19 years old and I did not know, of course, that that's what it was and I believe I used it for um, a crochet project or something. So I don't have it anymore and it's been long gone and gifted to someone. But um, there are a few buttons that I still would like to have like, for example, enamel buttons with, and when I say enamel, what I really mean are like the china buttons that have like figural 
paintings on them with enamel paint, such as flowers or scenery or people or animals, that kind of thing. Satsuma buttons, which as we know are the Asian buttons. I have a few cloisonne buttons. I believe I have like two or three and one of them is slightly damaged. And so I would definitely like to get a couple of those. So that's what I'm kind because I do get people who ask me like, what kind of buttons do you look for? What, you know, what do you wish you had? Um, I, that's, those are some that I wish I had. And there's a new button, it's not new, new to me button style that I'm getting more into. I've had these buttons before and I usually let them go, but now I'm getting more into them because they're, you know, things that I could use for projects as well as something I would like to collect and to create one of these cards for. And I will talk about that because there's one of them. It's one of these that's out here. Can you guess which one? Okay, we'll see if you're right. So let's get into what this is. So a good friend, as I stated, sent me um, a bunch of buttons for the holidays for Christmas. And just because, and she kept, you know, she said she was going to send them to me and she finally had an opportunity to, um, I would like to send some healing positive vibes out to her because um, she's had, you know, some medical difficulties and give her a virtual hug around the neck. So um, what I have here are some of the buttons that I will discuss that, you know, were in the packet. There were others, but obviously this video would go on literally probably for like three hours if I was to talk about every button. But these are some of the ones that I know that people will send me um, like emails. They will, you know, send me a message, a direct message, you know, trying to describe in words, you know, what these buttons are. It's always better to send an email with a photograph because, hello, I can see it versus you trying to describe it in words. Just make sure it's clear, the back, the front, and if you can get a side view, that's always helpful as well. So let's start with our first button. I'm going to pull this closer. And the first button I want to um, show you is, and there's a couple of them, are these, what did I just mention? Tagua nut vegetable ivory buttons. So these are made from a plant nut. And I have a video that I did all about these, this style of button. And there's lots of designs and colors and shapes, etc. And they're even made in different types of ways as well. The shanks on them, um, usually they are two hole, sometimes four hole, but most of them are two hole. And sometimes they do have a shank on the back like this one does. So, and you can get them carved, you know, sometimes they're planar. And the planar ones to me are more sort of like this, but you can get them like this. And they can also be carved. So even though they're like this, they may not be super plain. Let's see if I put this white piece of paper behind if that helps. Yes, it does. They may not be super plain because they might actually have carving in them, which is really cool and usually very detailed. The next button, or there's, like I said, there's a few, so I'll probably talk in singular terms, even though there may be a plural of buttons, is... And trying to get them in my hand so they don't fall all over the place. What we have are these beautiful, amazing, underrated celluloid buttons. Now just look at the variation of colors. Obviously the shapes usually are more round or rounded, such as this one. And this one that looks like it almost has like an animal um, spotted design. It's actually the celluloid. Then that cell underneath it, there's what would be a piece of paper with that design on it and this clear celluloid put over the top. And then the dark part is obviously just a dark formed piece of celluloid with the two holes in it for your thread. And my favorite, of course, come on, can you guess? Obviously, it's going to be this one. It's amazing. It has texture. 
It has design, obviously the color, absolutely amazing. I will just quickly do a turn. You can see what the back of it looks like. The back looks like that. Amazing button, my, one of my favorites out of all of these. So as you can see, I'm not someone who's like, oh, I only love the most expensive, you know, crazy, overly designed buttons. I'm a person who likes all sorts of buttons. And I, in my collection, I have all sorts of buttons, as you guys know, if you've been following this channel. And what I will do, because some of the buttons that I'm covering, such as the ones I'm touching now and the previous two, are buttons that I um, have videos on. So I've completed videos on so that you guys can go back and look at those. So what I'll do is put a link to all of the button videos in the comments and the description also. So here I have five gorgeous buttons and I don't know if my camera work is doing this justice. So I will kind of, you know, slowly rotate them, but they're, they're amazing. This is sort of like an aqua blue, the medium, this, this one. And these are from Abalone, so they, of course, have a lot of different colors in them and variations, and you can flip it over, actually flip them all over. Look how neatly applied these shanks are. They are, even the shanks here look amazing. And then this self-shank, rectangular self-shank button is one of my favorites. I hate to say it, but yeah, it's a color thing. It's orange orange do you know how hard it is to find orange vintage old buttons or antique buttons it is not easy and so if you find orange buttons made from old materials because yes nowadays you can find brand new almost brand new orange buttons that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the stuff that i'll even say 1970s and older if you see those, get them. Another color, or a couple more colors to be on the lookout for as far as old buttons go, made from high quality old materials that they don't really use as much anymore, are purple. I, honestly, even if I see brand new purple buttons, I'm closely inspecting them to see if there's something I want to add. Usually not because I usually already have them, but I love the vintage and old purple buttons, which are incredibly rare. Also pink, believe it or not. I know that, and I would say for pink, you want things that are 1950s and older. We'll even be generous and say 1960s and older. 1970s, there's a ton of pink buttons, not as special unless they're like super designed or carved out of like mollusk shell into something that's amazing, like then that's totally fine. Another color is yellow. So if I can find 1970s and older yellow buttons, that also makes me happy. So those are like the three rare colors for old, old buttons. Obviously, the reason I keep harping on the word old is because as far as new stuff goes, you can find them. So just something to be aware of and colors that you might want to be on the lookout for. So here are three ebony buttons and they're inlaid with Mother of Pearl. So we have these three gorgeous buttons the rectangular ones. I'm just moving it so you could see the color a little bit better. And let me see how these shanks are on the back. So technically these are supposed to be sewn on like this. And this one, yeah, the same way. So, and of course out of these, love, love, love this one. And yes, there's some damage on the side. That could have been in manufacturing, it could have been from wear and tear, from being washed, but regardless, I still love this button and it will definitely be something amazing to use in a project. 
so we have that too. Next, I have a couple China buttons, and these are made, okay, technically, are these China? They are, but to me, they seem like they may also be glass, but I'm not sure, but because I'm pretty sure they're China. I believe that they are, and they have this beautiful, as you can see, naturescape on them which I just want to make that a little bigger for you guys which of course is like the various color flowers and then you also have the leaves and it's just beautiful in the center you actually could add a monogram to those so loving these as well you guys know me I basically love all of the buttons so Yep, I'm not, oh, here, look, another one of those. Now, this is a really special button. It's not one that you see often, and I was so surprised to see it, and I was like, let me just double check and make sure I know what I'm looking at here. And so what I have here is a, yes, you can see it really well is a satin glass button satin glass you guys look up satin glass it's s-a-t-i-n glass absolutely stunning this is done in the berry button style and as you can see it has the beautiful pastel colors behind it of pink almost a lilac pink but it's definitely pink yellow and this like sea foam blue green absolutely stunning has its own self shank and what happens with this is underneath this finish of satin underneath that you have like three little pieces of glass that someone would have you know put inside of this pulled it lightly and then put this I'm trying yeah put this inside of a mold to create the berry design I just think that it is gorgeous. Actually, I'll show it to you this way again. And it is one of maybe four satin buttons that I have. So I don't know how common it is, but of course, there's that little berry design on top. And the berry design is exactly what you see, all the raised bumps. So they should be raised. They should look like a pile of berries, like a raspberry almost. And here we have another little special ditty, this little antique button, which is made from brass and it has this wonderful filigree work. It's domed in shape. And you can see that it's brass, but then they applied like this silver finish or wash to it which is why you see something that looks kind of white or silvery. And then let's see if we could flip it over without dropping it. Yes, Eureka. And this is what the back looks like. Oh, you could see through it now. So that filigree work is absolutely gorgeous in that. You see that a lot in jewelry. And here is another sweet cutie, which is pretty amazing this one is pink it has a brass applied shank and it has little pieces of confetti in it so this is a version of a confetti button some confetti and I wish I had the other confetti button out that I have that button is real I have a couple of them really cool because a confetti is like a variety of colors this one, the confetti is like silver and white. So, and the button itself, this like pink material is made out of lucite. And this is what the back looks like. Absolutely beautiful, such a cool button. And I, I really appreciate the variety that my buddy sent me because it makes it so much more fun and interesting when you're going through and you're discovering like just these really cool items but here this is um, a big beauty button 
Why is it called a big beauty? Simply because it is big, <laughs> no other reason. It's extra, extra large. And here is a um, silver Kennedy half dollar to compare the size. And then I'll even put it on top so you can see how it just, you know, it's huge, it's gigantic. This button is really large, so that meant that this button was meant for a coat. Probably the button that would be buttoned at the throat of the uh, coat or jacket or cloak. Um, I actually have plans to put this on a cloak that I have. And what I will do is, because one of the things I was going to ask you guys is like, what do you do with your buttons besides like store them and sort them and all that? You know that I do make different things out of buttons, but the buttons that I really enjoy the most, that are the most special to me, obviously I don't want to like use them in an art project or as a reclaimed project thing. So what what I do, for example, in one case is for I have three of them, I will take and change the buttons out every once in a while so that it changes the look of the cloak. Um, this is a mid-century modern brutalist style button and it's simply considered mid-century modern brutalist because of the size the weight this is a heavy brass button um the brutalist design you know dealt with things not always having to be perfectly symmetrical or smooth like this one you could see all of that design raised element and then you see the craters in it. And then there's this white wash of enamel going over it. That's such a cool button and very retro vibing. This button probably is circa 1960s. And something else to know about the mid-century modern period. Some of the things that they made during that time were kitschy. So very knick-knacky, cutesy-cutesy kinds of stuff. But they also made very serious hard lines, very rough, which it would be the brutalist mid-century modern. Then they made the sleek design stuff, which would be like the Sputnik light fixtures and stuff like that. The cats with the very long, elegant necks or those definitely drawn and pulled out um, panthers. Things like that. So uh, there's like three definite, um, I would say, pieces to the mid-century modern design and style. This one is Art Deco. It has this beautiful satiny glass. And this is glass. It's Czechoslovakian. And the metallic look that you see on it is actually a silver gilt. You don't really see silver gilt as much as you see gold gilt all over the place. So very cool button. Reminds me of like an old time Cadillac or something or Oldsmobile for some reason. And then here, this is the era of button that I'm starting to get into. I used to like when I got these, I would give them away in packets, things like that. But now I'm looking at them with a newfound respect because of my mother, my grandmother, and um, these are what they call house coat or house dress buttons. This one was made by the synthetic. Let me see. I want to make sure I get this name correct for you guys. Where are you? Oh, the Synthetic Plastic Corporations. So this one is so pretty with the painted rosettes in the middle and the green leafery. And of course, that's um, scallop going around the edge as or for the frame and then of course you can see how it's like pierced through so I am starting to get into these plastic beauties simply because you know family reminiscence and these would be great on charm strings and things like that so that one I'm actually going to add to my mother's charm string and here, let me actually get my tweezers for this one. I have a bone button that she sent me. So this one is made from bone. Very plain four hole button, but it is made from an organic material. 
And here, this button I actually have a question about, so please note um, any answers you have in the comments down below. This button is an acorn. I like acorns a lot. Um, this acorn button I've seen a few times and I've had, let's see if I can clear this up, and I've had this button a few times as well. The only thing is, I don't know anything about it, like who made it, um, let's see if I can fix that. Like, do you guys know who made this button? If you do, please let me know, but as you can see on the side, it's really a two-piece button. The back part is brown, which was applied to, and then, I'm sorry, this chestnut brown part was applied to that and snapped in. And you can see on the side, like, the layers. And you can see the shank coming up through the brown part of it. So if you guys know anything about who made this type of button, um, please let me know. But I do like acorns. I don't know why. Maybe it's living here in New England and seeing the squirrels running about. I don't know. But I do like it a lot. And then I have a couple charm string buttons. So this one, the shank was bent on it and I tried to fix it and wasn't super successful. It's still there. It's still attached. It still can be used. Um, I don't know what's going on with my focus here. Is that better? It's so weird that it would be more focused further away, but whatever. We'll go with that. Actually, see if that works. Oops. There you go. So this one, um, you know, it has the, the regular, what I consider, floret design on top of it. But then I have this one, which I like a lot more, which is like a carved plastic or ebony or something. I'm not really sure what this one is made from. I would have to do more research on it. But as you can see, it has that gorgeous carved design to it all the way around. They did not cheat us on that. This beautiful brass shank on the back. And then this is a beauty it's a pearlized glass button so what they did is they used glass and then they put this like paint over it that had a pearlized effect to make it look pearly that's why it looks like it does shiny I mean it's sort of a mock pearl if you will but other but versus being made of plastic it's obviously made of glass and this one is obviously very stylized. Look at this like piece that's raised here. You can see it really well there. Let's try our paper again. And of course, another self-shank deal. And what do we have? Oh, I already showed you that one. Okay, so this one is kind, actually I'll, sh I'll go to that one afterwards because that one's kind of funny. So in here, I'm not going to show you all of these, but there are several Czechoslovakian buttons. Some have a gold gilt. There's a couple that have a silver gilt. And in the middle you have this poured um, resin colory stuff that gives off almost a crazy moon glow effect. So, I mean, they really worked on this button and I love the design that's around that. It's really pretty. All of these are made of a black glass. This one reminds me of a car. Um, what are those things called? The hubcaps. Do they even use hubcaps on cars anymore? I don't think so. That's really cool. Here is another one. There's a lot of them, so I won't show you every single one, but look at this one with this beautiful silver wash on it and this raised design. And the button is sort of a dome in shape. And this one actually has a boxed brass um, shank on it. So that's one of the older ones. 
So that's one of the ways that you know an older Czechoslovakian button versus a newer one. The older ones will have brass shanks when they're this size. Obviously, if they're really tiny, there may be no shank. It might be a self shank. But when you get to this size, if it's self shanked, those are usually, I would say, they could be anything, you know, as far as age goes between the 1970s up until like, the year 2000 but the ones that are brass shanked those are your older Czechoslovakian buttons so if you're looking for something in particular and here we have these big beauties these are made of glass and this one I just love the way that for extra sparkle and effect what they did is they raised up some of the design like here 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 and it's all over and then in other places it's just like squared through so when you move this button is going to move with you and have all kind of very cool action this button is probably from the 1970s and then we have this classic design that many of us can find out in the wild all of this beautiful faceted work um, on this when you move I mean it's doing a disco thing right there absolutely stunning these would have been like coat buttons and then we have some morning buttons meaning m-o-u-r-i-n-g so like someone died there's a reason to be sad um, type buttons in here and these are a variety of different designs and there's several of them so I will just you know kind of raise up a few for you guys to see and every black button as you can see I just showed you one two three types right there in a short span of time every single black button is not a morning button and then this button has a very interesting story. It's almost a sacrilege. So this button, I don't know if I'll be able to show it on here. Let's see if this works. Doing a good job so far. I haven't dropped anything. So, so this button, as you can see, it has a very intricate design in the center and actually the little floral decoration, berry decoration is raised. That's actually a raised decoration done in enamel. This button is one of the porcelain um, buttons, but it also has gold gilt around the edge. Now, the, and also it's sort of a wafer shape. It's a wafer shaped button. You can see the dip right there. Now, the thing is, when I got this button, the design on the front of it was almost completely gone. It, it was so faint that you could barely see it. So what I did is I used a sewing needle and some tweezers and some enamel paint <laughs> And I actually sort of brought the design out again in this. So this is actually a button that's been refurbished. And I also use some gold gilt um, here on each of the little leaves and outline them in black just so that they would stand out a little bit more. So watch out for imposters. This one is sort of original, but it's also an imposter because I have refurbished it. I did have a few folks ask me about, you know, do you fix your buttons if they're broken? Do you glue them? Like, what do you do? Honestly, 99.999% of the time, I don't do anything unless I am going to use that button for a project, which means that it's not going to be like part of my collection per se. Then, yeah, go ahead and, you know, let your creative flag fly. But if you are trying to represent them as a certain thing, then obviously you would have to disclose any type of repairs or damages, you know, that are there with that button. Now, this is a very cool button as well. It is etched. So this is an etched button. That's how they got the design on there using an etcher. 
and I just love how busy it is. Like they put all of the flowers and all of the leaves right there on this button and that is great. And then it has this beautiful shine glossiness to it. And on the back, you can see that it's an older button. It has a brass boxed um, shank on it. So this is a very cool button. And another thing to know when you're looking at buttons, the more intricate the button is, the better made that it is, the better the materials. And that button is made of glass. That means that the garment that these buttons were on had to be fantastic. So when I'm looking at my buttons, sometimes I'm sitting here saying, oh my goodness, I could just imagine the outfit that this was on. And also, it's another way of using your buttons. You can, you know, update something that you have or change something that you have or vintage eyes something that you have in your wardrobe. Okay, so this button was, out of all the buttons, I would have to make this next to this beautiful celluloid button, of course, my number one favorite button that I received. Now, it was really hard to figure out um, what this button said on the back, but I got it, you guys. So this is a scent button. So it's a button that you would put like a drop of perfume on, and that would be your scent for the day, and you would just stroll around smelling nice and fresh, hopefully. I mean, perfume can't cover everything. Um, but I was able to figure out the words on the back of the button, which I, they're German, get shut zut or something. I don't know. I don't speak um, German at all. If it was French or Spanish, we'd be in business. And then, so these are the two words that were on the back. These two words with the letter G. You can actually look the, those up online and find out information about said button maker. And these, this is a German button. So this was made in Germany. And this design is Art Nouveau. It is glass with, um, let me just see what else I wrote on here. Oh, I wrote, it's brass with material. And the material, obviously, it's seen, you know, better days. You could tell that this was definitely, it doesn't, I just smelled it. It really doesn't smell like anything at this point. My hands smell like um, coconut lotion or cocoa butter lotion right now. But anyway, you could see the indentations on the back where the maker's name is. And this button is so cool, just so cool. This, once again, is something that, you know, you don't want to just use this for a craft. There's some history there. And then another button that I have a question on that you guys can help me with is this one. This button has this um, creature on it, very mythological looking creature. And he, I believe it's a he, <laughs> um, it has a pitchfork a long tail, what appears to be a lion's mane, which is very weird. And he looks like he's wearing some sort of garment, like on the upper part of his torso. Um, do you guys know what this is? I have never seen this um, design before. I feel like this might be something that's Czechoslovakian, but I'm not sure. And then I will show you the back actually does have a brass shank on it. So if you guys know what this is, please let me know. I would love to, you know, get the history on that. Just, you know, know who the maker is basically, and where it was made. And then I have these um, buttons, which are gold gilt. And these are also um, have the Art Deco design. So these are like, what, 1920s. Very old buttons. You can see some of the gilding is going away, which, hello, they're gilted. It's something that's normal and expected. And then something else I want to show you that I received was this gorgeous pendant. It was in with the buttons. It is a giant carved flower. And I will let, do some size comparison to, and it's so shiny. I apologize if the shine is like overdoing it. But you can see how big it is and compared to that um, silver dollar, half dollar. 
and this gorgeous carving that's in it and then it has a hole here so that you can attach a finding and put it on a necklace chain obviously and the inside of the beautiful abalone shell so gorgeous so smooth and these edges are so smooth you could run them over a baby's cheek and not have an issue I think I may have referenced that from Johnny Weir figure skater there are some cult buttons in here as well cult cult rock cult manufacturing um, this is one that I didn't have this color on um, this ebony black in my collection this is the number five I think yeah this is the number five cult button if I think her name is Deb Stribling um, S-T-R-I-B-L-I-N-G she has um, several pages on at I th are they on Pinterest on Pinterest and she actually has charts where she you know has identified several cult buttons not every single one but lots of them and then here we have this cute little Scotty Terrier I love the little Scotty buttons um, so I think I feel like I'm starting to collect these because I have several and I have them in my giant button book that I made as a junk journal um, so one of the things I do to catalog my buttons is create a junk I have a giant junk journal sort of like the little um, cards and tags that I'm making where I actually store part of my button collection the more special buttons can we there you go you can see the design around the edge um, this is a very common button these are very common cult buttons as well they come in a variety of crazy colors um, there's some lucite buttons these are not cult these are just that's lucite um, what else can I show you oh I want to show you this crocheted button so here we have this wonderful pretty large crochet button and it, you, it's called a crochet button as you can see for a reason you can see all the crocheting and usually what they did to make these is there is a cardboard disc in the center this one actually has some batting in it to give it some height and girth but sometimes they can be flat and they can be I've had them in different colors so they can come in all colors of the rainbow but the oldest ones will be black or dark brown and then you could see where everything came together here on the back where they gathered everything up there's like this little piece of lint that's getting on my nerves I think there's another piece of lint that's getting on my nerves but anyway so you can see where it's all gathered up in the back and of course you would stitch through the back to put apply this to whatever garment but that's a nice big one very decorative that's why I picked that out I usually don't show a lot of buttons that are made out of material here we have some twinklers you could see them twinkling brightly through that filigree work and let's see if this helps Yep, see if you hold so the whole idea you're walking you're flashing you know super shiny buttons these are made by the Lansing company so you would have gotten four of these buttons for 15 cents and then I want to show you guys these these are made in Western Germany so anything made in Germany you could date by whether it says Germany Western Germany um, all the different Germanys so you can actually google it and find out when things were made based upon how the name of how the country's name is written so this you would have had six buttons the top of this card has been cut off above the 10 cents but there would have been six buttons for 10 cents made with this quality the gold gilt the shape that slight doming almost like a biscuit shape and then you have the beautiful gold gilt on each corner which it has like that cut so that it's like an a weird octagon sort of and these are made of glass just to let you know as well so that's really awesome so when you have this much information 
because there's other numbers such as the design number and things like that, you can actually take the time to do more research so that you can learn more about, you know, said buttons. And let's see, what else can I show you here? I think, I mean, there are more buttons, you guys. There's more. It's just that you probably don't want me to go through every single one. This will be the last one that I will show you. This one is a favorite of mine, but I'm having a love-hate relationship with it. So it's like that child. Um, but so with this button, this one was also a discount brand button. This one is made of brass with little pearls, seed pearls, and that beautiful moon glow, um, I guess I'll call it cabochon in the center. The thing that I don't like about this button, honestly, are the fake pearls. So what I plan on doing is removing the pearls and adding rhinestones instead. So what is your opinion on that? I like am not someone who normally changes a button, but I just feel like this one deserves the update. So in the comments, just let me know what your opinions are on that. And let me show you one more bonus item. These are disc what I call discount brand buttons. And what would have happened is a company such as Woolworths, um, HL Green, Ames, Zares, there were so many discount stores or five and dime stores as I called them in the past. They would have had a contract with the, the button guy that would have come to their, whatever their national office was with his giant book or who knows what he was carrying case of sample buttons. And they would have said, I want this, this, and this. And they would have come up with a deal. And then he would go back, put in an order, and those buttons would be made for that disc, that five and dime or discount company. Um, Macquarie's was another discount company. I have to mention them, because, or store, I have to mention them because we did shop there quite a bit when I was young. Um, and so what would happen is if they would be put on this unusual, <laughs> which I think is funny, 